Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest Heresy Hammer. This is a, uh, a slightly different episode today. It's a correspondence and community special. So you might have noticed on our recent main shows, we've not been going through the news. We've not been going through your hashtag Heresy Hammers on Instagram. And we've also received a number of uh, email submissions for lists and uh, general kind of queries, which we've also not dealt with. So we're going to deal with all of those today in one big meaty chunk, much like pedigree chum. <laughs> I'll be your host today, John, and I am joined by my venerable co-host, Rob. Hello there. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm currently building uh, nothing but Death Guard. I've done 25... Stone pits. Yeah, I did 25 infantry yesterday, and I've got a Kratos and two Vindicators to build uh, today as well. Um, for yourself or for a client? No, this is for a client, actually. So I'm going to be doing painting Death Guard up next week. Okay. Um, and this is actually an army that's going, hopefully, going to no retreat, because I think the applications Ooh. for that closed yesterday, I think. I think they had 105 so applications. Um, Mainly based quite, on the back of our fantastic coverage. I would yeah. say so. I think we need a cut of the commissions. Um, Absolutely. I would say 58% seems reasonable. So <laughs> I'll send you my address for the check. Okay. So today we're going to talk about essentially the uh, like a review, what's been going on in the last sort of yeah. month or so, what we've seen, what's been happening. So um, this is the hashtag Harry Chamber content news and correspondence submissions. This, I think this is going to go even further back than last month because I we're going so, to actually, we're gonna yeah. talk about Mechanicum. So actually, the, yeah, there's quite a few. True. So we're going back a fair into the ether on this. So luckily, something's happened in the last few days to make it relevant again. So yes. we will see okay first things first thank you to our show sponsors for helping keep the lights on first things uh battle bling especially if you are into your uh eight mil but also they sent me some fantastic um armored proteus sponsors for the plastic land oh, that's where they were from were they that's where they oh, okay yeah you were showing off those the other day weren't you uh no that was a different one that was oh, actually was a resin one no I, right oh, i see okay to- Yes, uh, I've already I'd already supplemented some land raiders. Oh, the, fair enough. That being sent me, and I thought mm, this looks really good. And I have to have some resin, one, so I'm going to attack him with a saw. Got it, got it, got it. Um, yeah. um, so head over to Battlebling for all your gaming accessories, nameplates. Uh, they've just done another run, I believe, of their big Warbringer Titan for Adeptus Titanicus. I think it's I been think. it's been hardcore over there. It was very difficult to get hold of Johnny during during that period. I tried to contact him about something, and uh, constantly theme was going busy. Through. Yeah, yeah. But don't forget, if you use the code Heresy Hammer at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off. And then Bits Monster. So if you are looking to buy bits, don't want to buy an entire kit, then Bits Monster are the people to do. They're buying boxes, they're splitting them down, they're giving you the bits they want, keeping the bits that you don't. Um, you can visit uh, bitsmonster.com, head over to Instagram at bits.monster or bits.monster on Facebook. You get free UK shipping for over £25 orders. And they have incredibly reasonable rates of shipping to the rest of the world. And again, if you use hashtag, if you use Heresy Hammer at checkout, you'll get ten percent off all Horus Heresy items. So news, you're right, Rob. This is going slightly far back. We were teased about a month or so ago that the um, Mechanicum Battle Group was coming to uh, a hobby shop near you in a glorious new plastic form. Mm. How does this sit with you? Um, it's great. I mean, one of the big, um, barriers to Mechanicum has been, and has been actually for the past 10 years, plus three, yeah. um, or plus two because of second edition has been the fact that it's all in resin. So if you, if, if, uh, cost has been a barrier, um, this is certainly going to help with that. Mm. Um, I think from my own perspective, there are things from this box that I definitely want and things from this box that I don't want. I.e., I just want those six that six Thalex. Yeah, and, I I probably, say, yeah. and I could probably do without the um the little gribbly gribbly guys. Um the thralls. Yeah, the thralls. Um or thralls, dependent on probably thralls, actually. I think it is thrall to be fair, but regardless. But, but I think the really exciting thing is that um number one, it doesn't look like that the pace of heresy has slowed down in any way, right. shape, or form. Um mm. and this seems to be kind of like a pattern of releases now that I hope continues. So I hope that, um, I think it's fairly unlikely that we would see like a Sisters of Silence or a Custodes box in this form, but mm-hmm. it okay. might make might make sense that they 
then cycle back to Marines um, yeah. and then just kind of like cycle it that way. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is really exciting. Anything in plastic uh, is just, and especially like big hunks of uh, what used to be resin um, with the Triaris is like, it's just, it's just oh, massive. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, what I don't know is whether there'll be like a Karaknos sprue because you the Triaris would... is just the Kraknos with like some guns like putting out and a missile thing out the top, right? Yeah, you so have that's to all I imagine said. that it would be an easy enough thing to do, right? Yeah, I would have I would have thought so. So um I, I hope that we get the Kraknos and I suspect it won't be the sprue in the box. I suspect yeah, it will be a completely so. se separate box with the yeah. with the Kraknos uh, sprue. But yeah, no, really exciting. And because one of the things one of my complaints with like Castellax has always been that um although they're on sixty mil bases I never felt for like 40 or 50 pounds per castellate. You got a lot of bang for your buck, either on the table no. or in terms of model. So, I, and I suspect that this will fall into like the Hermes um, kind of thing, which is it will be 40 pounds for two. So like 30, oh, 34 pounds for like two. I think also the thing as well is, despite the models being quite chunky, same with the Thalax, is they are let down by spindly joints. Oh, for actually, the resin ones, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remarkably fragile. So seeing yeah. them remodeled and put into plastic is yeah wonderful. It, yeah, yeah, that's Ooh. interesting. I, I also thought, because I was painting up some phthalax recently, number one, I quite like this new head option. I think that's quite cool. Mm -hmm. um, but also I was like, whoa, the shape of these have changed. And I couldn't work out. But actually, the shape hasn't changed. All they've done is add, like, frag and crack grenade launchers yeah. either side that looks like it's more rectangular but i think once if you were to remove those i think they're basically the same profile as uh what they want before uh, yeah. did you did you watch star trek when you were a kid no I was not you didn't watching. okay well basically if you watch star trek with the next generation then these are basically so borg like um it's quite quite frightening actually because they always used to frighten me but yeah the, the phallics have got a much needed update haven't they oh, sorry the um the little gribbly guys have got a much yes. needed kind of like update yeah so, this yeah. is cool i mean this is to be fair this is a, a pretty much a port from over from the the resin one but i think the uh the castellacs look a little bit beefed up especially around their kind of upper legs uh, yeah so something's happened on the back of them as well because yeah. that back it did definitely around its bum did not exist before I don't, no. I don't, yeah some kind of ammo feed or something isn't it yeah and also as well we know that there are different limitations in terms of how you cast the plastic sprues as opposed yeah. to the, okay. the resin stuff which is you know why well known this is why the uh the marines have always got cables around their ankles because yeah. the plastic injection modeling process can't do kind of certain casts so oh, that's interesting. I, I, didn't know that. I think they look uh, fantastic a few other things that look fantastic we've not only got a plastic thanaton but we've also got a really really cool new new tech priest yeah what? this is absolutely banana very cool i mean just having a a, a thanatar in plastic is great um i do wonder so this isn't in the main box though. am i right in no. saying that this hq isn't in the main box no, the H oh, no the hq isn't in the main box no okay it's that nor is the thanatar Okay, that's interesting. So, yeah, I wonder how much convertibility or po like um, how many options there are with this guy. Because one of the things I'd like to do is run like a ma an archbangos with some phallax, um, but you need to give him a jetpack. So I don't know whether this guy also comes with optional jetpack or whether he's just limited in the clan pack to what you have here so it'd be i'm curious to see they've gone for a nondescript weapon though haven't they i mean it could be like a power axe a paragon blade i think it's it a like corpus, in a... corpus and stay i suspect what it's supposed right. to be but um you know the fact of the matter is there are so many good and so many good 40k kits as well that exist in yeah. the adeptus mechanicus that there will be loads of converting opportunities so but, this but, guy, but nobody think... nobody you would you would not say oh that's a corpus and save. I, you've got to run it as that. You somebody would just say, "Oh, I'm just running this thing as a." Power that's the thing with with the mechanic as a whole. I think there's so much. There's you know you can interpret things in so many different ways, can't you? So I think, yeah. I think this kit will be everywhere. I will certainly be picking up this this boy and this large boy to the left as well because <laughs> yeah, so you can't even find that Thanatar, can you? No, not in plastic. No. Uh, so um, and there was obviously a uh, a little suffix to the article that said there's still not everything you can expect to see in the coming months and we'll have more announcements soon 
in the meantime, head back to the preview hub to see everything else released at the preview. Now, um, we have got a little uh, Legions Imperialis update. So the next campaign book was announced, which is The Devastation of Talon, um, which is as a long-term Iron Warriors aficionado is one of my favourite um Kind of my favorite campaigns it was one of the books that really um introduced us to uh the kind of the legion on human combat the plight of the human versus the might of the legion and i think it's really 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 interesting that we're going to get to explore talon in kind of more depth i think it's a, a huge shame that this didn't come for the 28 mil scale but mm. i will i'll forgive that because i so somebody mentioned this yesterday and the cycle that happened with Beta Gamma was that they released the Great Slaughter, yeah. and then some months later they did the Battle for Beta Gamma. So I still yeah. think that there is hope that yes, yeah. and um, Beta Gamma was Talon also book. featured in uh, one of the Adeptus Titanicus campaign books as well, mm, quite yeah. early on. As obviously a big sort of Titan conflict, it made a lot of sense. So yeah. it would be wonderful to revisit Talon in maybe a future expansion for the Iron Warriors and the Solar Auxilia. That would be mm -hmm. or the militia that would be that would be mighty that'd be something i would definitely get involved with and then we also had some new kits previewed as well so we've got some new lehman russ variants uh, we've also got the uh saber in mm. uh, the small scale and also the missing sakaran variant so we already had the amiga and the standard one and now we've got uh the connoisseur's choice the punisher and the Mook's choice, the Sakaar, and <laughs> the, the those uh, sabers oh, are quite cute, though, aren't they? I mean, they're, they've got to be oh, teeny tiny, absolutely miniature. Yeah. So, but again, if you've seen them in big scale, they're just that, but smaller. Yeah. And again, good to see the remaining, the missing kind of Lehman Russ variants kind of fleshed out as well. So that's really, really good to see. We also had a, a, a surprise exemplary battle out of nowhere. I don't think anyone was expecting this, were they? Were you? Um. I might have known about it, might not have known about it. I don't know. <laughs> well, I wasn't. I was not privy to this in the same way that Rob was. But um, Sanguinary Guard had been something that's been talked about in so many, basically every every novel that's featured, Blood Angels has had Sanguinary Guard featured, and they've been such an iconic part of 40k lore for such a long time that it's interesting that we finally got some, uh, some rules for using them in our games of prosperity. So, we're going to quickly run through the rules. We're going to see what we make of them. What were your initial thoughts, Rob, when, when these first dropped? Um, I thought that it was... The, the way that they had gone about this was much better, I thought. So, they had clearly tag-teamed with SN and Cult of Paint to yeah. do this. And I thought that um, it was great to see an exemplary battle released again because, yeah. the, like, we haven't had one in a long time. Although they did make it clear we're not going to have one in a long time. Um, and I thought that this was a much more slicker and professional way rather than just saying to influencers, I'll just create what you want. I actually thought that the collaboration on this was, was good. Um, I think that... Um, yeah, you know, the sanguinary guard we have in our head are probably quite ornate models, which the Mark VI um, kind of sculpts, despite them being very good, are not necessarily. No, but, so, so what what like best represents it? And I think that the sanguinary guard models in 40k probably are a little bit dated now. There are bits, of course, that you could take from them, but they're yeah. probably a little bit dated. Um, but um, yeah, more more of the same would be great, I think. Um, and it's just another unit, like, but the one thing i would say is that the loyalists yet again have just got another really good unit yeah. um and a re another really good close combat unit and <laughs> like it would be great to get some traitor love with other close combat units um, but yeah but i yeah it's interesting but yeah it's great to just have this option yeah absolutely for sure so we're going to quickly run through the rules give you our kind of uh, initial thoughts so uh, for 210 points, gets you five Sanguinary Guard. They are um, sort of veteran level stats. So the weapon skill five, BS four, straight force office four, two wounds, initiative four, two attack space, and two up save. So they come with uh, Artificer Armor Standard. They also come with a Perdition Weapon and a Bolt Pistol. 
so that's uh pretty handy and again obviously being just a perdition weapon you can equip them with perdition blades or perdition axe yes of course yeah, yeah yeah and most of those are like brutal too aren't they i know they're not like some of them are ap2 but most of them are like ap3 but yep. i think pretty much all of them are like brutal too or have some kind of yes. extra funky rule to them don't they they also come with a jump pack, so obviously their bumps their movement up to movement 13 to give them additional charge bonuses, and we'll also grant them deep strike as well. Yeah. So that's super useful to consider. Um, so the special rules, they are Legionaries and Starties, Blood Angels. Also just bear in mind, they sit in the HQ slot as well, but they can be taken as a retinue. So in the standard way that most retinues can be taken, they yeah. don't then take up a separate part of the Force Org, and you can also give them a, um, they can exchange a position weapon for a power weapon and a Legion standard for 15 points, which I think is what you're going to do all of the time, right? Yeah, yeah, I so do agree also with that. Yeah. quite nicely with the new Command Squad sprue as well, funnily enough. <laughs> a bit of cunning cross promotion there yeah that i mean that was it as well wasn't it which is that they dropped the command squad sprue and then yeah. they dropped this and it was good to illustrate the kind of kit bashing you could do but it was coordinated that's the, that i suppose that was my point which was that actually it was a good reflection of how you can kit bash these kids to yeah. make um make a completely new unit um not the most original or inspiring but it can be done which was which was great the Chosen Warriors, they've got the support squad rule, which is a bit of an odd one, but... Uh, oh, because they can't, be, basically, so they can't be taken as your compulsory HQ. Compulsory HQ, exactly, yeah. but the still then gain line, obviously, by having the Legion standard. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Sanguinary Guard retinue rule, so they're taken as a retinue, and they've also got this new rule, which is Burning Ones. So Burning Ones is, if selected as part of detachment in an army that includes a Sanguinius, but note, it doesn't have to be Sanguinius's retinue, it just has to be the same detachment as Sanguinius. Um, uh, attachment of an army because I can't see it in the same detachment because Primarch is the same detachment, blah blah blah. Um, all Sanguinary Guard gain plus one attack while Sanguinius has four wounds or less. Oh, right, okay, interesting. interesting. Yeah, and if Sanguinius is removed as a casualty, all Sanguinary Guard that detachment gain an additional attack. So they'll have if he is dead, if you sacrifice your Sanguinius. <laughs> the altar of terror then these guys will have their four attacks base before any other bonuses that's uh that's pretty cool so um yeah that's interesting and just a note on the perdition weapons actually so i saw a lot of conversations about whether you would take these guys over say a command squad the problem with the command squad is that they aren't characters so yeah. um they can't each take a perdition weapon so basically what this has done is allow people to take perdition weapons um uh on mass um the only so a blade of perdition is two-handed um the axe of perdition is unwieldy but it's also two-handed uh spirit perdition is two-handed and mortar perdition is two-handed so they um although lots of they all have brutal two you don't get plus one for that um for the no. bolt, bolt pistol and the perdition weapon so they remain quite low on attacks but um yeah, it's interesting that plus one rule. And I think Sanguinius, when he drops or when you do like a deep strike, I'm you get something along the lines of like plus one uh weapon skill or something. Um when kind of like he lands from my memory. Um so these guys could potentially be up to weapon skill six, I think. Um mm -hmm. I might be yeah, that's right. So um so basically so special in the same army as sanguinius that de either deploys as part of a deep strike assault or has a or has a legion warhawk jump pack gain a plus one weapon skill on any turn in which they make a successful charge so yeah these guys could be potentially going at weapon skill six uh you know deep strike charge weapon skill six that's pretty pretty frightening pretty good yeah uh, but if they select as part of the attachment that doesn't include sanguinius then all friendly units including sanguinary guard units that are locked in combat and have at least one model within six inches of two or more sanguinary guard models okay bit of admin yeah. there but yeah. <laughs> okay may add plus one to the total number of successful wounds caused for the purposes of resolving combat resolution okay yeah that's quite good uh that's similar to what i think that's fairly similar to what sanguinius gives himself i think that's one of his rules it's sort of like a plus one to com uh, to combat res that's always actually just mega useful especially on drawn combat so yeah so you can make him extra killy by adding more men's for 40 points each which is you know it's all right 40 Ooh. points it's yeah. a bit spicy but you know yeah. they are they are good they are good um you can give them all melt of arms for 25 points per unit uh, which is obviously, you know, the more you take, the better better value that becomes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, for every five one modern mechanized dangerous perdition weapon for a paragon blade for ten points, which I think. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Well, yeah, that's an interesting. Not option. the worst move. Yeah. And then you can take a hand flamer, a volcaster penta, a plasma pistol, or an inferno. Whoa. Pistol. Any any sanguinary guard you could yeah. have, like you could have ten inferno pistols. Uh, okay. I mean, it get pricey, but um, yeah, but this fun, is right? yeah, this is interesting. It's just it's an alternative, isn't it, to the um to the command squad. I yeah. think that they it's going to hurt them a little bit that they've got no um uh invun save. So your gut might be okay. Well, I'll put an apothecary with them. If you take them as a sanguinary guard retinue, you then can't take. An apothecary, apothecary, you're gonna have yeah. to take them as a well, HQ stop their own. Yeah, you'd have to yeah, exactly. So you can always attach Sanguinius and then add these in as the you know, you know, just attach them so they're not a command squad to get get around that, but then you lose yeah. the opportunity to have them as line and um Yeah. Yeah, so that's an interesting one. And one does lo make strange their perdition weapon for a power weapon and a legion standard. Okay, so you can't have a perdition weapon and a legion standard that's no. just, that's too much is it i don't, I don't know i don't know why that's too much but okay that's fine oh because it's two-handed right yeah they can't right okay yeah yeah i like it it's good um and for all those people who've already got kind of like sanguinary guard options it's uh it's great for them and then we saw the new resin kits as well with all the perdition weapons so it's kind of yeah it's just very fortunate funny, funny enough yeah cool yeah and like then the oh the last thing that we saw was the next book which is this yeah. came just out of, out of fat air didn't it, it I, I nobody expected this it was um yeah and I, I presumably it's just a book entirely based around mechanicum um which means that we're this is going to drop at the same time the the book drops as well you which would, is great you would have to you have to imagine so it's titled the martian civil war so and what it's going looks to do is it looks to obviously in and amongst the model release we'll get additional rules for dark mechanic for the first time mm -hmm. so yeah for the first time we we're going to be given sort of rules for dark mechanic in as much as dark mechanicum so we've obviously seen the uh, like the demon engines and stuff previously um in a, an exemplary battle or like a pdf recently yeah that was uh, right yeah. yeah but um these uh i don't think it is necessarily going to be an entirely new army list i suspect it's going to be the standard mechanicum army list but with things like mm. we believe there's going to be new potentially new high techno arcana and also new sort of dark mechanicum enabled cyberthergic powers right um so essentially just being able to give the standard list a little bit more kind of flavor off to one side for the traitor oriented robots and um cyborgs um they could tease a couple of bits and bobs so this rule is scion of sarum so an army that includes a warlord with this warlord traits may select blood slaughterers and troops and or fast attack choices in the detachment which includes the warlord only so the, the, the yes. blood slaughterers are <laughs> resin what used to be forge world resin models am i right about that correct which also they no longer produce but that's amazing that they've included blood slaughterers as a model in a brand new book that suggests to me that we're going to get blood slaughterers in i plastic. think you I, th I think you kind of have to again like putting two and two together uh and that's just you know putting two and two together <laughs> there's no other <laughs> other than the fact that i can't see the fact that it makes no sense to include support for a model that doesn't exist yeah in yeah. reality yeah when, and also the the rules the blood slaughter is really really good they yeah. are they'll be really 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 fun i could yeah I, I think honestly i genuinely think if you are a mechanic and player then you know happy days you've your, your kind of ship is coming in and i think if you're a legion player you can get used to playing mechanicum um, yeah obviously start by visiting the patreon and checking out our series of mechanic <laughs> specials that we're doing um because honestly they're going to be they're going to be absolutely everywhere yeah it's interesting isn't it would you do would you do a whole mech army or would you do me an allied detachment yeah no, yeah i do a whole mech army personally you do a whole well, army. well because if you can go down a route where like the model count is relatively low as well mm. like, if, you, if you look at you know a unit of castellax a couple of units of thalax and an arch magos and a couple of thanatars you're already at like, two thousand points i mean it's the, um, basically the opposite of solar orcs isn't it in that yeah way. absolutely yeah. exactly and you know adding adding a knight in there now as well we've also got a huge range of plastic knights that you can kind of ally in and stuff so yeah, yeah, i think um point. i I think you're going to see Mechanicum are going to be 
all over the place for the next six months which i think is really exciting i don't think that's a bad thing at no, all not and at all like, yeah i'm shake, shake things up well fast vastly more excited for the mechanic and release than i was for the solar ultra release oh interesting yeah okay cool, cool, cool. um titan support as well so this is an <laughs> interest this is a campaign yeah. strategy. so this is to be used within the, the campaign that no doubt exists within the book when declared this campaign such was declared the player that's declared it may ignore the points limitation placed on models with the titan unit subtype for that battle this means that any amount of the army's points limits may be spent on titans but all compulsory slots on the force organization charts must be filled as normal and models with the titan unit subtype still up used up the lord of war choice yeah so essentially magos auxilia or magos two units of tech thralls warlord yeah it's interesting this because we have absolutely zero context there's no context uh, other than people for, going for this oh, well. good hell everyone's going to be bringing warlords to 3k games yeah but that's not going to happen because it's only going to happen in the campaign right so yeah, yeah absolutely it's not something that i don't think will be perceived at like events you're not going to be no. walking up to an event with an all comers marine army and having to face off against like two weaver titans yeah like exactly that, that. Like, exactly that oh honestly rob why and why not able to do this so we've not done this for a for a hot minute have we no ages, ages for yeah. people to submit their um hashtag heresy hunters to us and um we've decided to bundle them all together in one show so we're going to go through a few now we're going to start off with muck gravy with uh a world eat spartan yeah I, I mean we i think we've featured McGravy before um but his world eaters are sublime yeah like they're really really good like he's done a great job on them they look brilliant really nicely weathered uh nice and subtle yeah nice and subtle weathering uh but a tank that feels like it's seen a lot of uh age and yeah it's just brilliant this he's just done a great job you'd be proud to own this army wouldn't you Oh yeah, hundred percent. I also like uh, I like the the way that he split the panels with the the blue and the white. Yeah, I think that I've, I'll be honest. With you say I see a lot of worldies at the moment. I think I've really just too from a painting perspective for my own personal tastes. The contrasts in the white are just too much. Yeah, it's like almost goes from like the black to white over the course yeah. of one panel. And I think that that for me, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily my jam. Yeah, I think that this is absolutely like spot on for me this is how i would if i were which i'm not but this is how i would go about doing this i think that the blue is really really rich i think that the white is abs for me is absolutely spot on yeah uh the weathering is perfect There's nothing wrong. clinically it mm. is brilliant um we think another world eater from heresy kurt i would echo the uh the same i think the white is absolute and the white and the blue the contrast between the two are absolutely bob on yeah good glowing eyes i think actually yeah i was about to say it's the glowing eyes it's the and also as well that sour and pattern helmet just is so world eerie it looks so good on that um so good on the plastic mark three so i'm assuming it's a 3d print yeah i was just yeah. about to say that actually like that is it a 3d print because that looks too clean to be like an old resin an old forge world i've got yeah. some old forge world sound pattern helms and they are I, I don't also think they're scaled particularly well to fit yeah. with the later kind of plastics interesting um but also again i think just a good like a good amount of blood splatter mm. It's very easy to overdo the gore. And I yeah, know the whole I'm point sorry. about, you know, the corn berserkers by the kind of the very end of the siege, the reason that they're red is because they're just covered in blood. But I think um I think that this this is uh again a subtle but kind of good amount of of gore and and mess and muck. I would yeah, it's interesting actually, because if you're not a big fan of the bunny ears but you still want a world eaters feel, this is a good alternative, I feel. Um, perfect yeah. yeah like very very sinister uh yeah i like that the really elongated mouth grill is yep. really cool isn't it yeah i like that a lot yeah it's cool nice way seize the initiative is there something really interesting here a death guard in mark six don't mm -hmm. offer assault. death guard assault squads again we we know uh well, for those who follow me on instagram know that i've, I've been on quite a death guard trip recently and i've been sort of painting slowly painting a, a kind of a another little army up um but like 
assault squads weren't like necessarily preferred in the uh, in the death condition why you don't necessarily see too many of them but this is i think is a really nice way of blending both the mark three and the mark six kits Am I right in saying that Death Guard assault marines wouldn't take dangerous train tests? To my to my simple brain, I would have said yes. I'm just going to quickly, whilst we're on the subject, I'm just yeah. going to quickly um, confirm in my searchable PDF. Okay. Well, the the other thing I think is good about these is that so he's used I think the Mark Two or Mark Three Band shoulder braces. pads. Um, oh, the Mark Two shoulder pads. Yeah, which... and. And then the Mark III heads as well, because yeah. it, they're a much cheaper alternative and very similar in style to the Mark VI heads that already exist from Fortress, but probably are far cheaper and you're going to have far many of them kind of like laying around. So, um, yeah, I think this is a good option. I saw somebody do this in a Warhammer community article. They'd done it with Iron Warriors and then put these heads on. I was like, oh, actually, that works quite well. So, um yeah, no, that's really nice. Just while you're looking at that, I will go on to Magu models. Um, so one of our European uh, brethren, he's been working lots and lots on. Um, no, they would still take. They would still take a dangerous train. Oh, interesting. Them, like. Okay, they just ignore difficult track. They ignore modifiers. It's okay. not a modifier. Okay, interesting. Um, so yeah, we've got some Ultramarines by Magu models here, which are the Locky. I assume they're Locky because they've got swords. Oh, um, yeah, but really lovely, really nice. Yeah, they're really. I saw his army in uh, greetings in April, and it's absolutely fit AF. And he's also a man who's clearly making use of the smaller scale, older models to make up for his enormous stature as a man. He's about four hundred foot tall, so it must look like he's playing epic when he's uh, when he's playing. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. He's also used the um, Night Lords uh, Raptors, Raptors jump Yeah, interesting. Yeah, they really they work really really well. That is a good kit blend. Yes, agreed. What's up next? Oh, honestly, my ability to skip through these is horrendous. Right, road to terror. Road to terror. First of all, so, switch your uh, switch your light on so we can we can when you take a photo. Or yeah, we, absolutely. Or yeah, put the put the ice ISO up a little bit. Um, but um. Yeah, it's, it's grim just, dark, Rob. It's grim dark. It's grim dark, of course. Um, but this is really nice and some good, like nice subtle OSL. Um, yeah, and it's, a really it's classic, right? Because it's basically yeah. it's an entirely grey model that doesn't look entirely grey because yeah. he's got some really nice weathering. Those little, he has. He's not. It's a good example as well, right? I think of how you can put solar on the table, look effective, and not. He hasn't gone like mega harsh and like mega hard on all the trim. Yeah, it's those subtle little bits he's picked out on the like the kind of the thigh pads uh, in the black and the red. Just yeah. just set it off really, really nice. He's not gone completely bonkers and like paint yeah. every single little trim panel. No, yeah, I guess you. Don't, yeah, that's a good point. Actually, you don't need to paint all the trim on this. And actually, just picking Ooh. out a few bits actually works really, really well. Yeah, and they contrast really nicely, like the, the steel bits on the kind of legs and the, the red panels, and then those um, yeah. those glowing eyes. Really, really cool. Yeah, cool. Um, Riftboard Studio has painted this absolutely top tier white scars and Derrideo. Yeah, it's really good. I really love the bases. I think the base is really nice. I don't know. I think he's cut out this image and then put it on a white background, which is why it's just like so. Like the white is quite. Um, the white background is quite harsh in my eyes, but the model is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, some of the finest white scars I've seen, actually. Um, yeah, again, he just needs to do an army of them. Yeah, really, really nice white as well, echoing what I said earlier about yeah. um, McGravy's uh, world. It is just like great white, super weathering. Like it's weathered, it's battle hardened, but it's not like over the top. The red is really, really rich as well. And I think that really, again, much like the blue on the kind of world, it really, really offsets the white really, really nicely, stops it from looking kind of too sort of stark. This is. Yeah. The bases are the bases are the they're the ones. The base the, the bases. You don't see that a lot. You don't see like jungle or forest floor bases a lot in heresy at all. It's often like sand or desert or yeah, you know, in urban a really landscape. Wonderful contrast to the white and the red as well. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. it's really really Bases and bases, as we always say. Yeah, no, it works really, really well. Oh. Um we've got some teeny weeny stuff. So Victor Pesh is a, an account that I think uh, has given me some in, in, uh, some inspiration for my Death Guard Recon Marines recently, and um, he's been painting up some Ultramarines um, uh, Kratai from Legionis Imperialis. 
I don't know what to say, really. They just look brilliant and to get that much detail into such a small scale. Yeah, yeah it's great. And uh, he's great at photography as well, in particular. Yeah, oh, yeah. His stuff just looks so, so good. And then uh, Ben Lewis Grace, again, someone we featured previously. This, I mean, I think, to be honest with you, if he hadn't uh, got his hand in the picture, you'd forgive this for being a, a 28 mil tank. The yeah, fact that he's gone into so much detail painting all of that trim is just, well, yeah, mate, nice. you, you deserve... He's a very precise painter, isn't he? Ben? Very precise. You deserve an unreal amount of praise for that level of dedication to to the craft. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and then the last two we've got, so we've got Red Eagle Studios painted this um, uh, Blood Angels Praetor. Um, great use of the Eidolon kit. Yeah, a brilliant use, model, actually. Really, really good. I think Eidolon's one of those kind of really old miniatures because he's so sort of thick still works in the kind of the new scale yeah still looks and uh, just a good example of like super ornate i think he's sculpted on some of the, the the teardrops as well right okay yeah i see yeah okay okay well i've seen some really really good stuff with the empress children kits on kind of other more ornate legions and this is a, this is the antithesis of that really i think this has just got some subtle little accoutrements and it's just yeah it just works right just works it's great yeah brilliant and then lastly, we've got um, the Best Underscore Studios, who has painted uh, uh, Quijar. Mm -hmm. um, much more sort of desaturated colour palette here. So oh, it's almost a, it's interesting. It's almost a, a pink, isn't it? Lots of pink and yeah. pinks in your in tones there. Yeah. I'd maybe suggest he's possibly taken some inspiration from our friend uh, Brennan from mm -hmm. BB Studios, who mm -hmm. again has a habit of kind of making his reds like really really desaturated in the in the highlights which yeah. i actually think works really really well yeah i th can see pinks within the um within the white as the, well in the white but i don't know if that's a reflection of the like as in that's just the ambient uh the ambient lights, pinks yes. pinks around it but yeah interesting yeah very interesting uh take and it's always actually good just to see some different styles of painting yeah, 100%. we don't want we don't want to turn up in every angle at the same right so the same yeah 100 percent Cool. We've now got a couple of emails and some lists to go through. So people have been submitting some correspondence to us via our Gmail link, which is heresyhammer30k at gmail.com. So this is an email from The Pale Hunter. So he says, I'm very new to heresy and I've only played about 10 games so far, but I've really been struggling to get wins in my close combat focused space wolf army. I have two big grey slayer squads, but it feels like they're constantly getting shot and then overwatched so much that if they ever do connect with a charge, it's rare that there's enough of them left to achieve anything. Am I expecting too much of foot slogging, power arm, and wearing close combat units, or am I just using them wrong? At the moment, I'm considering either putting apothecaries into those squads to improve the survivability, or investing in something like a heavy support squad to try and lay down covering fire and provide a distraction, but not sure if either of those are smart options. Grateful for your thoughts, chaps. So we had a little chat about this. Often. Yeah, we, we did, didn't we? Well, a couple of ideas. So the apothecary is obviously a good shout for uh, for points. And, and I think to be honest with you, like in your scoring and line units, apothecaries are kind of almost ubiquitous, really. I can't remember a time when I left home without bigger tactical squads or big squads with, without apothecaries. Um, Grey Slayers having Heart of the Legion also will give them additional an additional bonus to that uh, feel no pain when on an objective. But it seems to be that his um, main issue is just getting his guys there, you know, and on to objectives. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's interesting because I read into this that he's actually using them in a um, quite an aggressive role. Who's the um, yeah, because obviously they are quite close combat units. And I think that um, the problem is is that they're relatively squishy. But if you start putting loads of power weapons and other weapons on them, they're going to mount up in cost pretty quickly. So you do want to kind of keep them alive. We had had a discussion. You know, we were like, oh, okay, well, maybe he can switch off um, some... Um, he can switch off a reaction using a librarian. And then we did some research before we came on the show and we were like, ah, oh, actually they can't take librarians, but one option just to increase the survivability. So this isn't about switching off, uh, switching off reactions, but you can take a caster of or ca a caster of ruins. Now the caster of ruins has, um, or can, uh, choose the psychic discipline winds of femoris it comes with wrath of the death wolf we won't get into that now because that's not too important but it's really storm rot that you want to um 
you want to look into. So if you're not going to put an apothecary in there, what you can do is cast Storm Raunt on yourself, and that gives you a five up shrouded save. You don't even need to roll for that; it will just give you a five up shrouded. So if you're running into things like last cannons, for example, um, that's great because the feel no pain. It you wouldn't get that feel no pain. No. Um, but the shrouded you someone drops get. a vindicator or a typhon shell on your head. Exactly, exactly. But if you do decide to make the check, um, you then go to a shrouded three up. So you'd have your normal, yeah, you know, you'd have your combat shield saves because I assume they've got combat shields. Looking at those pictures of a six up, then you've got a three up, um, a three up shrouded save yeah. on top of that as well. Yeah. It's not very useful against things with night vision because uh, they can just ignore the shrouded. But actually, a shrouded three up is pretty impressive. So you might yeah, want to shrouded consider... three up is really impressive, and it'd be yeah. great against defending against that small arms fire having like three up, three up. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think um, you know, the, without just doing the kind of standard, oh, it's trip on the transport and where you go. Yeah. Um, and bearing in mind that obviously space walls can, you know, run and charge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hundred um, percent. Keeping them on foot is is a good way of of kind of keeping them points effective. Um, and um, also the other thing as well with the, the cost of ruins is the fact that you have to, you know, in a space run, you, you're having to take additional HQ choices anyway. Yeah, as part yeah. of their as part of their legion sort of uh, overview, so you know this is a really really useful like a big pack of of gray slayers with with a caster in there is going to be a really really effective way of being able to um, not only keep them alive but also just give them a tiny little bit more punch. You know, being a character who's got access to different weapons and he's he's also he's no slouch in in combat himself. Nope. So yeah, because he's so just he, a normal centurion. Yeah. Yeah, so we think that we think that what you need, maybe as a potion apothecary, is um, cost of ruins, and away yeah. you go. Yeah, give that a go. So there you go, the pale hunter, paint yourself up a cost of ruins, chuck them in there, and then laugh wholeheartedly your opponent when you're just having to roll three ups and then three ups again, and nobody yeah. dies. So good luck with that one. Yep, yep, yep. Um, we've then got a couple of lists to go through. So the first one is. Uh, this submission here from Fulgrim's Finest over on Instagram. So this is a question. So um, are any of the Heresy Hammer team considering Malmo this year? Now, I missed Malmo last year at the last minute because uh, life, and I'm definitely not going this year because of life. So, um, but this is a two and a half thousand point Sons of Forest list submission. So Rob and I had again a quick little look at this before we, we jumped on. And we think it might. We're not entirely sure which, because there's no, um, there is no right on war specified. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to assume that he's looking to take um, the long march, march because all his heavies are in um, Transport. transports um, because he's bought a second Proteus Land Raider, and I'm assuming that is for the ten chieftains. Yes, I would imagine so. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, an issue in the fact that actually it's not technically a legal list. Correct. Uh, because it's only got one compulsory troop in there because uh, it's got 10 recon marines who unfortunately um, can't be uh, a compulsory troop. Yeah. So I think um, the the, the, basic, the most basic thing I would say is just drop a couple of chieftains, a hundred points of chieftains, yeah. or drop some points elsewhere and just get a 10 man tax squad That's in there. Cool. Just basic, keep it simple, having them foot slog across the board. You've got loads of other threats that well, sit on a back, yeah, just deck chair back for an objective. Yeah, exactly. And actually, this list on the whole is actually pretty good. Um, yeah, I quite like it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's just a really good list. Um, and we can see from your painting, it's really well painted, but you need a second yeah, tax squad really in there. So nice. just find the point, second tax squad, and away you go. Okay, so we start with the Cataphracti Praetor with a Thunderhammer. You've got the Warlord trait chosen by the Dark Gods. So that is roll of dice on a roll of one. Bad things happen. A two to five. Something cool happens on a roll of six. Something really cool happens. So he is joined by a five man just here in a retinue. So there's two Thunderhammers in there. One chain fist, two with dual lining claws, yeah. legions. So, when I ran my black reaving list, I ran um, the, the dual lining claws absolutely bonkers. But I ran the one. I found that I, I found that three thunder hammers and um, uh, sorry, four thunder hammers and the and one dual lining claw is how I ran mine. He can uh, the chain fist is quite useful there because he could just take on 
armor you know he like, oh, that's, yeah. no, that's, a, that's, a, that's the problem with thunder hammers i think they were all like even power fist you're like ah oh, this armor 14 kratos yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be able to glance it on sixes you yeah. don't even blow it up so just having a cheeky little chain fist in there is often yeah oh. what i did with mine is i uh i had the the, the cheeky gentleman's multi-melter in there okay so, okay uh, that makes sense the, yeah the, the, the open. Like that. yeah that's clever but i don't think the loadout is particularly bad and the, the, the dual line of is really really nice i think it's yeah. absolutely good for blending like yeah, six six oh, attacks on the charge, right? It must be because they go up become a three base, two for three base, weapons, yeah, and then one for charge. Yeah. Yeah. Seven nice. if they're in a black reaving because oh uh, of course, yeah. Range. Interesting. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yep. Getting to like Praetor level of attacks, oh, no, there, aren't you? Absolutely. Like special character level in there. Yeah, but yeah. The, the, the other thing is though, obviously, like the five attacks with the Thunder Hammers is also no 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 joke, joke is it? Yeah. Um so they're in a Proteus with a twenty glass cannon, yep. which is Absolutely standard. Fine. Yeah. Ten chieftains. So Rob, you're what well, I had chieftains in minus, but you're way more experienced with the chieftains than I am. So I'll let you think about Yeah. So ten chieftains is a massive point sink. Yeah, uh, that's what I, that was my concern straight away. But they are I mean, they've got their twenty wounds, you know, for yeah. a, a squad of ten. Um, so and then they've got their two up and then followed by five up yeah and um, they're scoring as well because they've got yeah. and the benefit of these ones is because he's not taking them as a retinue he's taking them as an hq he can actually attach a um an apothecary to them so they've now got two up five up five up um so they'll be super survivable i think that the power fist on the chieftains is is really good you want to be going after independent characters because you get various re-rolls on on that yeah. he gets a re-roll ones um which is really really nice and then he's got five chain axes for kind of like ablative wounds now that does come with a banner as well so they are scoring so that's the second yeah. scoring unit already five, there's five scoring units so there's four scoring units, four scoring units at the moment yeah. yeah um i think that you can afford to to take Drop away two or three chain axe uh chieftains um in order to get the points for the the tax squad but uh, yeah that that will do work yeah and it's also i i like this strategy because you're basically spreading your um your assault potential across two different units so if one mm -hmm. just gets demolished then you've always got the backup one which i think is probably the way to go about doing it i completely agree so we've got two apothecaries, one with artificer armor. So I'm guessing they're going in the tactical marines and the chieftains. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we've got a uh, contempt dreadnought with gravis melter cannon and a power fist, and then a contempt with two gravis melter cannons. So that's providing your mid range kind of anti armor. Yeah. Uh, we've then got ten tap rings of chain bayonet, side of artificer armor, dedicated transport is a rhino with nothing. Mm -hmm. Um. Personally, I liked to give my apothecaries the uh, Kasaur and Power Tabor. As they are characters, they can technically take it. And oh, interesting. Can, yeah, interesting. Uh, they, they always did a little bit of work there. I'd maybe be tempted to drop the Artificer Armor from the apothecaries and bang a Tabor on each of them. I found that they did. Um, especially the one in the Chieftain Retinue you always did, did work. Then again, I was yeah. running one with Reavers typically. So again, they want to be in combat maybe a bit more than your tactical Marines. So I kind of fully appreciate that's that's open for discussion. Um, what do you think about the loadout for the Contemptors? Uh, fine. That's what I would do. That's exactly, in fact, that's exactly what I do. Well, yeah. There we go. We'll you, got anti, you got anti-tank and then two subs quite, and then you got one that's a close combat uh, threat, which is, is good. Yeah. The thing is that if he is running the long march, all of those get plus one to their movement if they don't yeah. run. Um, I think there's a second condition, but basically if they don't run, they get plus yeah. one. So those dreads are actually moving like nine, nine inches. inches, aren't they? So yeah. yeah, they're pretty, pretty scary. And like even those slow units like just there in, yeah. They're moving seven, and then the chieftains. I think they will probably be moving eight. They don't. It's interesting because it doesn't change its movement characteristics. It's just plus one movement, so they don't. Yeah. You people might be listening to that, being like, "Whoa!" Like that means that it makes them plus one charge. It doesn't affect that. Yeah. Um, but actually, a dreadnought that has movement nine is a pretty scary prospect. Yeah, I'd maybe be tempted personally to give both the on both the. Um... Consensus is the same. So maybe grab a melt cannon and a power fist, and maybe put a melter in the fist as well. Yeah, that's a that's a, another um, classic uh, classic option. You got the, the fire base. I mean, you know, you can always. I think if you've got ten points spare, I always think it's good if you've got a double. 
like melter cannon or double weapon if for yep. 10 points giving it the target rate. Yeah. Yeah. just because yeah. it can yeah you know, it's got night vision i think so it can ignore things like shrouded if it stays still yeah um and then can intercept for free um so yeah it's always good i suppose i it's basically i think we just need to pretend this recon squad here is a is a tax squad because i don't think 10 recons is 155 points either i i i with a with a Kasorum power table, I, I would have thought it would have been more than that, but maybe I'm no. Wrong. It's only so they need to start getting. Well, if they're no, if they've just got bolt bolt uh, bolt guns or shotguns, then they are still pretty cheap. And when you start okay. getting nemesis bolters, they start getting expensive. And obviously, everyone gives them nemesis bolters, so that's when they start okay. getting getting more expensive. Okay, cool, cool. Um, but again, I think that this recon personally, I would either shrink this recon squad down, or potentially also make it two fives. Yeah. And then if you have two fives and then a second tactical squad in there, and then you have six scoring units at two and a half thousand points, which yeah, pretty, is, yeah. and two of them, let's be honest, the chieftains and the just there, and they're going to be absolute mother truckers to, to remove. Yeah. Your tactical Marines can, because in terms of like the frontline threat, like two contemptors and then the just there and, and the chieftain pushing, like pushing on and being the aggressive threat is really, really, really problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be tough for people to deal with before they're up in your grill. You've then got the kind of the recon marines who can either deck chair battlefield objectives or can scout or infiltrate onto like objectives further up the board or in the, like, the, like, the kind of no man's land. And then you could potentially just then use your tactical marines to be tactical, like to, to deploy them strategically on certain to grab objectives. Because yeah. the fact you've got two huge, really tough, really, really, really killy close combat threats that are also scoring is... Um, like you know is is pretty wild um we've then got i love this unit so we've got five outriders with flamers and shotguns yeah this is good it's not something you see but i actually think that people it will do damage and it's only 180 points as well so i think yeah that's, yeah i think it's fine uh, i think sergeant with artificer armor and a kasoran power table is a great show as well really really like that unit people will ignore it thinking it's dog shit up until the point where it does like 40 40 or 50 wounds in yeah because what, what you i guess you're hoping is that you, they they shotgun something and then they concuss something and then mm. you, one of your units charge in is that the i assume that's the kind of like the aim here. i think so yeah yeah okay interesting we don't know what the recon marines are because they might be armed with shotguns as well which yeah. can also do the same thing because the okay, shotguns are free upgrade so i'd assume that basically he's put those in there just to score because they get plus one for their cover saves because they're yeah. i think they're skirmish or yeah i think it's the skirmish not the light rule that gives them plus one so yeah. um yeah as you say split those into two but yeah i like the twin linked flamers i think it's good and i think that people will be like oh there's other threats i'll shoot these things and then they've just been mm. flamed to buggery basically when they've um yeah. Then we've got Proteus Land Raider with twin glass cannons and a searchlight in the heavy support slot, obviously Fine. for the Chieftains. Um, it's also what's really useful about having it in the heavy support slot as someone who fielded one for uh, Reavers in there as well, is that because it's not dedicated transport, it can then also go and pick up other units mm, like yes. play game and run them around if they need to, That's, or yeah, provide yeah. Like, uh, a hiding place for, for units i hadn't considered that so that's, that's a really it's good really way. really really useful and then we've got a sakaran with uh the accelerates auto cannon sponsor last cannons and searchlights which is choice yeah yeah I that's a that's an yeah that's nice. interesting. yeah i think it's uh i think it will do well i think it will i think it will do well too i think it's quite nicely rounded i think five or six scoring units if you can cry by them in there are wild but just make sure that it's legal yeah yeah it's great love it yeah, really good. Okie doke. And then lastly, we have this one from Sultan. So this is 3,000 points of Custodes of Valdor's game. We've got a Shield Captain with Meridian Swords and Architect Pistol. We're just going to quickly run through the list and Rob can give you his thoughts because he's the, the Custode boy. So we've got five Guard, three with Spears, one with an Axe, and one with a Mastercrafted Pamel and Vexilla. We've got five Guard with three with Spears, two Axes. Five guard, three with sensor war blades and shields, two with solar power gauntlets, two squads of those. We've got six I got jet bikes with uh Lastra and bolt cannons. Fucking hell, they're expensive, aren't they? Jesus Christ, I forget about that. Two palace attack speeders with the twin links arachnus blaze cannons, and then we've got three Caladius. Uh, we've got two turret mounted Elastus accelerator also cannons, or you got accelerator cannons, um, an enhanced arachnus blaze cannon, and then in the Lord of War slots. Constantine Valdor. Rob, go. Yeah. So 
when we discussed it previously, we were like, oh, we, yeah, we quite like this list. I think that the Claudius Grav tank is quite an interesting one because he's taken three. You know, one I think is just like, it's just so meh. But actually, yeah. having three is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah, um, it's different, build, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. It's, it's, because each it's one is. Threat overload, really, I think, at that point. Uh, it's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, because they each have a flare shield, so it's going to take some dedicated fire to, to get rid of. I think it's 13 on the front, but basically it would be yeah, pseudo 14. I think the other thing to consider here is the amount of deep strike that he's got on offer. So, in terms of flexibility, so. Valdor gives himself deep strike and then plus three other units deep strike. You know, he's going to go with one of the Sentinel Guard squads or the Custodian Guard squads. Um, he's probably going to give it to like a shield captain and another squad as well. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you'd almost probably start with two Sentinels on the, on the table just with their yeah. two up, five up. But then the jet bikes, which are a lot of points for just the bolt cannons, but the jet bikes. Um, and each of the, although each of those jet bikes comes with a, a melter bomb, so you know they've got yeah. some, um, and also a custode riding it. Yeah, and then you've got two palace, and then the three grav tanks. I think they can all deep strike. Definitely the palace and the jet bikes can, but I think all those tanks have deep strike as well. Mm, so it actually, means. it could be that you just start with like two sentinel guard on the table, and if you can't deal with those from the first turn, he's just his entire force is, force is going to deep strike so closely to you, you're basically screwed. And lots of these weapons on the Claydis grav tank are like range 36 and 24. I mean, some of them are like you know, the, some of them are a bit funky, like their strength eight AP one. So you want to be as close as possible. Um, some of them like have armor bane because you know some of the weird shit. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really interesting list. Um, but but as you say, the Agamatus jet bikes are eye wateringly expensive, eye wateringly expensive. But I think that Sultan swears by them. I think that he takes. Yeah, them I I think I know. I just. I feel like I would drop those and put a couple of dreads in. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, because you could get two dreads. But this is from someone who who has not the experience with the army. But you know, so um, Rob and I did a like a three part series over the Patreon about deep dive on the Custos units and um, and kind of list building army tactics and the the like. The spear dread is just oh, chef's kiss. Yeah, love it. But. Yeah, look, the fact of the matter is someone has got a lot of experience using his customs, and if he swears by them, good on him. Maybe he can drop us a line and let us know um, why. Yeah, why he thinks they're so good. That yeah, that'd be pretty useful. Okay, so um, if you want to send us some correspondence for the next month's show, you can do so. Please send in your emails, questions, our list for discussion and review. Send them to heresyhammer thirty k at gmail dot com. And keep using the hashtag Heresy Hammer on Instagram to get your uh, painted miniatures um, uh, featured. Uh, a last shout out to our uh, sponsors, uh, Gator 3D. Dan always does good stuff. He has got uh, exclusive from a loads of uh, sort of top notch miniature designers, stuff that you can only get um, through him. So check out Gator 3D Printing. Um, Curtain Games as well. Always look after us whenever there's a new box set dropping. Tim is the first person that will message and be like, need two of these, please. Uh, always looks after us. Uh, great price and also fantastic levels of service as well. Like really, really stonking. Bail with miniatures printing. So uh, a huge catalogue of stuff. Yeah, stuff stuff that Beowulf do that I haven't seen anywhere else. So um, if you have a, a 3D printing need, need a part, need a bit, need a this, need a that, check out Beowulf Miniatures Printing over on uh, Instagram at Beowulf Miniatures Printing, Beowulf Miniatures on um, on the website, and then Beowulf Miniatures Printing on Facetube. Um, so a new uh, new partner of ours, thank you so much, to Sacris Mundus. So um, they have... Uh, terrain 3d printed terrain yeah so, yeah they, they do the they do the files yeah and they create the files and then you'll you'll need to print it off yourself uh yes. however way that you want to do it but um yeah they you do can some really get cool one of stuff. our printing partners to print it for you absolutely absolutely it's the way to do it you buy a thing you can either do it on carp 3d my mini factory or patreon and search for sacris mundus um i will be having some of this stuff done up because it is wonderful I mean, the, uh, I keep it every time I say it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that 
pyramid prospero <laughs> one looks absolutely awesome it's brilliant and then lastly the shout out to the big dogs the group of absolute heroes so um we now have over 500 members on our patreon which is absolutely wild considering where we, you know when we started it we thought we'd be really absolutely amazed if we got to 20. <laughs> um so um this is the list of the praetors so these are our top tier patrons and we'll be receiving a big old box of special merchandise goodies if you want to uh, check out what is on offer at the on the um on the Patreon, head over to patreon.com and search Heresy Hammer. Um, so we have a uh, a range of additional shows. We do these two additional shows every month where we discuss kind of tactical deep dives on certain topics. At the moment, we've just finished the... You did a Kratos one that we just released this week, so Kratos yeah. Redux. So we've gone back yeah. and looked at the Kratos again with a, a yeah. 2022... We, 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 well, we had, I think we had spoken about the Kratos in lots of different forms, but never exclusively a Kratos yeah. show. Um, so this one was just purely kind of tying everything together, what we had talked about previously, and then kind of our thoughts on it. It was interesting. I, the Death Guard one, I know you're doing Death Guard at the moment, but the fact that he can move 10 inches, and then yeah. I'm giving away stuff, juicy stuff on the Patreon at the moment, but the fact that he can move 10 inches and um, fire everything, I was just like, it's like faster than a White Scar's Kratos. Yeah. It's absolutely lunacy. It's great. Absolutely wild stuff there. Um, so we did two additional shows, all of our um, media that we produce for our events, so all the event packs and all of the kind of cards and additional materials all available for people to utilise. You get early access to our event tickets, plus various other things for just a mere £3 a month. You can spend more if you like, and you get very, very cool stuff, which is what this group of heroes has done. Um, and we also now offer a free seven-day trial. So head over to Patreon, jump in, find out what it's all about. And we're about to start a huge mechanical yeah. deep dive. So we're going to be going through this this very month, in fact, or maybe yeah. next month. And we're about to do the first show for yeah. free on the on the main feed, right? So. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a wild time for the Mech Boys. So if you want to really get your head around either playing with or playing against Mechanica, then you need to get involved over on the Patreon. So please, Chris, kind of keep submitting your. Uh, your miniatures using the hashtag Heresy Hammer. We feature them on these correspondence specials now. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Give us a like, comment, and share with your friends, families, and colleagues at work. Uh, you can drop your correspondence to us at heresyhammer30k at gmail.com. And the last shout out is if you'd like to support the show further, you can do so by pledging to us over on Patreon. For all those additional benefits, and just head over to patreon.com and search Heresy Hammer. I think, Rob, that's us done. It is indeed. Have a good right. one. Have a lovely time. Bye-bye now. Good.